I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today we're looking at the Holy Roca Kute F4 All-in-One Flight Controller. And I want to tell you the things I look for in an F4 flight controller. It's a short list, but many of them fall short. And I'm going to tell you the other reasons why I think this one is so cool. Let's get out of the way right here at the beginning, the first reason why I think this flight controller is so cool, and that's because I helped in the devel its development. I did some testing on it, I gave some input and feedback, and Holybro asked me to write the manual for it. They wanted to make sure they had a really good manual written by a native English speaker, which not everybody seems to have that standard. Many flight controllers don't have a manual at all, and so I wanted to write a really good one that took somebody, a rank beginner, through all of the steps of how to wire this up so you really understand why you're doing what you're doing, and it's like 28 pages long. It covers everything from how to wire it up, how to connect all your peripherals, how to download and install the drivers and beta flight, and everything. But setting aside my personal stake in it, I do think this is a really nice board. One of the things I look for in any F4 is the ability to support SBUS, smart port telemetry, and smart audio all at the same time. Now, many people feel like telemetry is optional when you've got an OSD on board, and this does have an OSD on board. And I, I can understand that perspective, but I like to have telemetry, and there's two reasons. Number one, I like to have my Tyrannus give me audible alerts, for, for critical things like low voltage because I often miss the OSD. It's often not possible to look down at the OSD when uh, when you're flying really hard. So an audible alert is nice. And also, if you support smart port telemetry, then you can also support the Lua script that lets you change your PIDs via, via the Tyrannus, and that's also very nice. Now, it's not a given that you'll be able to do that with many F4 boards because even if an S4 board does support smart port, it may not always support the bidirectional communication that's necessary to do the Lua script. I'm not actually sure if that's the case on this one or not, but I, I definitely want to be able to do all three of those things at the very least. Smart port, smart audio, and SBUS. And this board does tick all of those boxes. It's a real shame that so many board designers well, some board designers these days seem to feel like only two UARTs is enough. One for your serial receiver and one for, oh, whatever else you want to do. You need telemetry or smart audio, you pick. No, I don't want to pick. More UARTs is better. They're on there. I want to use them. The way that Holybro has designed the Kakute to support smart port is that there's a dedicated telemetry pad that you solder your smart port to. You can still get at the, the UART transmit and receive pads if you need them for something else, but if you need the inverted input for smart port, there's a dedicated pad for that. So that's how they've approached that. And you can have it both ways, that you can use that UART for smart port via the smart port pad, or you can use that UART for any other uninverted protocol via the, the TX and RX pads here at the edge. Now, the weird thing about this flight controller is what is going on here? And I'll tell you what's going on. This is the IMU, the Inertial Measurement Unit, also co commonly known as the gyro. And when you have to, when you have problems with noise and you have to soft mount your flight controller, it's really the gyro that you're trying to protect from the vibration. When you soft mount the entire flight controller, you got some problems. One of the problems is that it's often difficult to, to fit that into the stack. You have to have the rubber standoffs or you have to have the O-rings. The O-rings don't always do a great job. And the rubber standoffs are often the wrong length and it's just a big hassle. It's especially a big hassle if you have a frame. The one that comes to mind is the Shrike. It's a little bit of a dated frame, but on the Shrike, it's a pure X base plate with a single stack and a camera pod on top. And the stack goes right through the flight controller mounting holes. And you couldn't soft mount that because the entire camera pod would be swaying in the wind. So on any frame where the flight control stack is integral to the frame, where the standoffs go right through the, the flight controller, there's just no real effective way to, to soft mount the flight controller. Well, you can use gummies like the race flight guys do, or here's the idea that I proposed to Holy Bro, and hey, they bought it. <laughs> I hope it turns out to be a good idea. <laughs> the idea is that you just take the IMU and you put it on some foam to soft mount it, and uh, yeah, then you can hard mount your flight controller and you don't have any problems. Now, one of the arguments I've heard made is that this is not nearly light enough to have enough mass, to have enough damping, to actually be of an effective vibration. And, well, I, I beg to differ. I've taken black box tracing, and I've done some test flying, and I feel that it is a sufficient amount of filtering to be able to hard mount the board on, well, obviously, I don't have a thousand quadcopters to test it on, but I've, I feel like it makes a big difference. And the key thing to keep in mind when it comes to filtering is that you don't need perfect filtering, you just need enough filtering to keep the gyro from flipping out and, and the quadcopter from flipping out.
So I hope that I hope that as this gets more out into the wild, we see that people are able to hard mount this board in maybe some places where it just wouldn't have been feasible to soft mount, and this this finds a home there. Now there are some gotchas with this. One of the gotchas with this is that a very early prototype of the foam we used was too soft. It was too flexible, pliable, and if you landed hard or if you hit a branch and the quadcopter twitched violently, then uh, it would go into a spin of death and it, you would have to failsafe it to get it to quit. Lowering the throttle didn't even stop it. Basically, the gyro would start flopping around back and forth and it would get into a feedback loop and the whole copter would flip out. We've replaced that with a stiffer foam and everything is fine so far in our testing. But I will say that if you think, you, if you get any experiences like that, one thing you can do is you can pull this off, you can scrape that foam off, and you can just get, I, I've, this is what I tested originally. We weren't able to get this exact tape from mass production, but this is just 3M double-sided foam tape. You can get some of that, and you can put it on there, and you can replace it with that. If You should be fine, though. You should absolutely be fine. I just know that when you go from you know t testing with tens of people to selling it to thousands of people, you're a little bit more likely to run into problems, and I'd hate for somebody to have a copter fly away or something because it did, didn't work for them. There's another gotcha that comes back to this, and that is the ribbon cable. Now, this ribbon cable is, well, it's more fragile than you might like, but there's really no other effective way to do this. And it's especially fragile because these pads here, these are where you're going to be soldering your video transmitter. Or is it your camera? Which is it? Video in, so that's the camera. Yeah, that's where you're going to be soldering the camera. Yep. So when you're soldering the camera here, be really careful not to damage the ribbon cable with your soldering iron. Just hold that out of the way or do whatever you need to do. Just be super careful there. It does come with a spare ribbon cable, uh, but this soldering is gonna be beyond many people's reach. And so just, just seriously don't damage that. <laughs> the other complaint that I would have about this board is that it doesn't have an SD card reader on board. Holy Bro just doesn't seem to like to include them uh, despite the fact that I like them, and you can kind of see why. Where, where the heck would they put them? There's no, no room on here. It does have a great big data flash chip, though. I think it's one of the biggest on the market, if not the biggest. So you got plenty of room there for black box logging. And okay, but it is going to take a while to download those black box logs over USB versus just pulling a card out. On the other hand, you never eject your card, so that's nice. Well, there's one more thing to say about the gyro, and that's this. In a really tight stack you actually are going to lose some space here. So for example, what some people might do is they might put the receiver right on top of the flight controller and just sort of stuff a naked, a nice little X, XM plus receiver in there. Well, you're not going to be able to do that because you can't have things touching this. So you are going to lose a little bit of space where you might jam stuff in a very, very tight build. And it might be better in a very, very tight build to, to not use a board with the, with the gyro sticking up like this. Well, that's going to bring us to the end of this review. Uh, I do want to encourage you to go ahead and download the manual for this flight controller and check it out. I really do think it's, I did a good job on it. It's got every step of the instructions that you would need to wire this up, for, even if you're a rank beginner. And if you are a rank beginner and just don't know even where to begin, this might be a good board for you to start with because I wrote the manual just for you to help you understand not just what to do, but why you're doing it. Not just put the red wire here, put the black wire there, but hopefully as a little sort of mini primer for how to wire up a flight controller in general, and this one in specific. Uh, this board ticks all of the boxes for what I look for, except I wish it had an SD card reader, but hey, can't have everything. Uh, and it's got a really interesting, innovative design here in the ability to soft mount just the gyro without soft mounting the whole flight controller. I'm curious to hear what your experience is with it, more so than most, because I participated in the development of it. But I do want you to know, I'm not getting any kickbacks or anything from the sales, so buy it if you want to buy it. Don't buy it if you don't want to buy it. You know, But I think it's a pretty good one, and I think it's worth your consideration. Thanks for watching. Leave any questions or comments down in the, in the, in the comments. That's where you leave comments, right? Yeah, I always screw that up. I'm a terrible YouTuber. Leave any questions or comments down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Happy flying.